has a magic all of its own about the cup final, and this time it was a super final. For in this match at Wembley depended the double. Could Spurs become the first team this century to win both league and cup? That was the question in the minds of all the 100,000 in the great stadium as they entered the community singing. The preliminaries over, the teams took the field. Leicester City on the left in track suits and league champions Tottenham Hotspur. City's captain, Jimmy Walsh, presented his team to the Duchess of Kent, who was deputising for the Queen. Spurs waited for their turn. A nerve-trying time this for all the players these last few minutes before the game began. Danny Blanchflower, one of the most attractive personalities in the game, introduced Spurs. In charge of the game was referee Jack Kelly, a Lancashire man at his best on a big occasion. Walsh made a wrong guess, so Blanchflower won the toss and earned the right for Spurs to play with a breeze behind them. Victory for Spurs would make this an historic final, a landmark in soccer history. McIlmoyle kicked off for Leicester. The great game began. Spurs in white shirts kicking from left to right. Incidentally, quite an ordeal for young McIlmoyle, brought in at the 11th hour at centre forward for Leicester in place of the experienced Ken Lee. On City's right wing was the sparkling Howard Riley. He attacked confidently, only to be robbed by a Spurs defender. The classical style of the champions was soon in evidence. A well-placed centre found White, but the inside left shot over. Allen tried his luck with no better effect. Wembley finals have a history of accidents. Spectators fear the worst when Spurs right back Baker fell and lay still. The 100,000 were relieved a few moments later when it was seen that he was not seriously hurt. For well, seven finals have been marred by injuries since the war. And then, to everyone's dismay, Leicester's right back Chalmers was on the ground writhing in pain. He was a passenger till late in the game when he went off altogether. Could any team, even Leicester on top form, possibly hold Spurs with only ten men? Meanwhile, Dyson shot tamely. Officially outside left, Dyson was evidently enjoying himself on the right. He passed to Jones. A goal! <laughs> to Spurs' dismay, referee Kelly ruled it offside. Though spirited attacks were made by both teams, neither defence was penetrated. The scoreboard remained blank when the whistle blew for half-time, signalled for the guards' band to take possession of the field. of both sides livened up considerably after the interval. The injured Chalmers was still playing, hobbling about at outside left. No wonder some people are once more demanding that substitutes should be allowed in the final. Spurs outside right, Cliff Jones, was more than once the victim of his own speed. This time, the ball went to Dyson. That dynamic midget smartly got his head to it. Over! Corner to Spurs. Dyson took the kick, but nothing of any use resulted for Spurs. Leicester's fighting spirit won admiration everywhere. Thousands began to ask how the game would have been standing at this stage, but for Chalmers' injury. Suddenly, Bobby Smith seized his chance. Goal! For Spurs, that goal was just what the doctor ordered. Again, they attacked. 
Leicester weren't in the least downhearted. With a good shot, Riley narrowly missed. Now Riley took a corner. Brown easily saved. An anxious moment in the city's penalty area. Spurs' unrelenting pressure brought reward again. The ball was centered. Dyson headed a great goal. Still, Leicester were undaunted, though there were two goals down with a very slender chance indeed of drawing level. Dyson tried again, almost on full time, but Banks had positioned himself perfectly. And there it was, the match win. Spurs had won the cup 2-0. Danny Blanchflower must have been the proudest footballer on earth as he ran up to the Royal Box to receive the cup from the Duchess of Kent. Spurs had won the fabulous double. In recent years, Wolves, Albion and Manchester United have all come within an ace of it, and all have failed. winning the cup with young supporters to contend with. For Jimmy Walsh and his men, there were only losers' medals. But what a game they'd played. Hmm, some foil. It's 64 years since the last time the double was won, and in these days of strenuous competition, most people thought it never would be won again. So in Spurs' dressing room, there was every excuse for jubilation. Danny Blanchflower and his men have earned the right to be called the team of the century. Champagne on the house. Congratulations all round.